Microsoft is making some changes to how OneDrive retention works that could actually significantly impact your organization and actually cause you to pay more fees and storage costs. So in today's video, I'm going to be unpacking those changes so you understand the impact and I'm gonna be providing you my top recommended actions that you can take. Before we dive in, just a quick introduction. My name's Nick, I'm a Microsoft MVP, and every week I come out with content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Okay, so diving in here, this is the article we're gonna be going through and unpacking. Classic Microsoft article that has a lot of textual information that is quite confusing. You know, as you read through this, there's a lot of asterisks, if you will, for the announcement, but this paragraph here is really the core focus of what we're gonna be unpacking, and I built a visual to really make sure you understand what's going to happen in this January 27, 2025 timeframe. Basically here it's saying any OneDrive user account that has been unlicensed for more than 93 days will undergo the following actions. And this first bucket here is basically saying if they have a retention policy, it'll automatically archive the data after a license removal and it will be visible to admins but not accessible unless you take certain actions which they outline here in this article. The other one here is the unlicensed accounts where you just strip a license from a user and you're not deleting them out of the user list or in Entra. And if they're not covered by any retention policy, they're gonna be moved into the recycle bin after 93 days, whereas today they don't do anything. And then subsequently they're gonna be deleted permanently. So let's go ahead and shift into the visual that I made so you can understand these changes a little bit better. Okay, this is just a quick diagram that I built here to describe the current functionality and then that functionality coming January 27th, 2025. Effectively here, there's kind of two ways you can unlicense quote unquote a user within your ecosystem. One of which is to delete the user altogether as in blow them away or go through the user deletion wizard, which I will show you here in just a minute. When you do that today, there's a default 30 day retention where the users can still access that and you can do that through a GUI and it doesn't require any power shelling, things like that. But after that, it goes into this recycle bin within SharePoint that only admins can access for that 93 day period and, and they can use PowerShell really to collect that information then it's blown away forever. The other situation here is that you do have some type of customer retention policy, which you can set up in the SharePoint Admin Center or within a retention policy within the Compliance Admin Center. And I'll show you both of those as well here too. And that allows you to retain it beyond you know, the default retention policy that you see here. The other big loophole here that we saw that Microsoft's really trying to solve for is just users being stripped of their license after they leave the organization. So think of a typical user offboarding event, you unlicense a user instead of blowing them away, or in often cases you're converting them to a shared mailbox, but you're not necessarily using this user deletion wizard within the admin center. And in those cases, data is really retained indefinitely. So the big considerations with both of these here is that effectively, as an example, you could have a hundred user organization that actually has a high amount of churn where they have a hundred active users, but they have 500 users that are dormant, that are disabled, that have left and come to the company over time. And subsequently all of their OneDrive data is being retained because all you guys are doing as part of an offboarding process is just unlicensing them. And all that OneDrive data could accumulate to terabytes of storage that technically you're not actually paying for today which is why Microsoft wants to move into this new motion. So before we hop into that new motion, let's take a look at the user deletion wizard and some of those retention policies so you understand what I'm talking about with that clearly. Within the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you can go under users and active users here. And as part of an offboarding process, in some cases you might just click on a user and you block their sign in here and then you go to licenses and apps and then you strip them of their license here, which does include the OneDrive account that was provisioned as part of that holistic license. And that's where it flows into that unlicensed OneDrive account versus going into kind of this retention deletion workflow that you would have. And today, again, that's where data is retained indefinitely. So if you go through the deletion workflow for the user, you have the ability here, in this case, I'm just using a demo account that doesn't have a OneDrive provision, but typically, you know, you would have this and you'd be able to provide access to another user. 
And by default, if you have the hierarchy set up for having managers in your Active Directory, it's automatically assigned to the manager for access. And they'll get an email about how to access those. And they have 30 days basically to get any files out, you know, from that account and store them that are important. They may store them in their own OneDrive. They may store them in a SharePoint site, things like that. It's always been a constraint, I think, to think about the retention here for this. But those are the couple of the ways that you would go through that flow. And then on the retention side, if we talk about policies for that, we can go into the Compliance Center, but we could also start here in the SharePoint Admin Center. And within the SharePoint Admin Center, there's a section here for overall retention. Here, if you go under the settings section here and click on the retention here for OneDrive, it's defaulted here again to 30 days, but you can put it up to the 3650, which is 10 years for this. And that's what a lot of us have done in the past. The other way that you can do this is via the compliance admin center and setting up a retention policy. Here within the new compliance portal, you can go under solutions and then data lifecycle management. And then you have retention labels, but more specifically retention policies is what you can set up here. And you could say you have a OneDrive uh, policy. And within here, you know, you can really dictate static. I want to say, I'm not going to go through this in depth just for the sake of this video for time, but you would target OneDrive accounts. But the main thing I want to show you guys here is that you can spe specify a time range. And some of us may have done this and you could say custom and you could go, you know, for a very long period of time here and uh, set that, you know, for particular um, age. And then you could say when the items were last modified and you could say delete items automatically or just do nothing. You could also just say retain items forever, right? So that's another setting that you could have set up, but now that has some hefty considerations when we think about the upcoming storage cost. So let's shift back to the diagram now to take a look at what's coming in the new year. Okay, so back here, you know, as far as these two flows go, the user deletion wizard now, when we go through this, if you've gone ahead and deleted the user but don't have a retention policy, the same thing kind of articulated here still exists. It will go into this default 30-day retention, it will go into the cycle bin, and then it'll be automatically deleted after that. And then in the retention policy scenario, it's actually going to be automatically archived after 93 days, and it is going to be inaccessible to admins. And so you can't even, you know, restore with an admin PowerShell or anything like that. You actually have to go through this reactivation process and set up a Syntex account with Microsoft, which is part of their new backup and archiving solution product. And it's really based off of consumption. So you, in this case, you're paying for a 60 cent per gigabyte reactivation fee to access whatever OneDrive that you're looking to access. But the other kicker here is that you're also paying then a monthly storage cost of five cents a gigabyte for the entire pool. Now it's a important asterisk to call out there when I talk about an entire pool, let's say you have a hundred archived OneDrive accounts and you just want to access one of them after users just left and we find out, oh, they had a file, you know, that's from six months ago that we want to access. And so you have to pay that reactivation fee on their gigabyte cost. But then you have to pay the monthly cost recurring of whatever the gigabyte pool is for every single user within there. So that could be the 100 accounts, right, in this example. So in certain cases for customers, that could be pretty hefty. For SMB, it might be pretty nominal, but it's something that we have to consider now. Um, as part of that, the other big thing here is that if we don't go to the user deletion wizard, we just unlicense them if you don't have a retention policy, it's automatically going to flow into that offboarding type of process that we saw with the deletion wizard, where things will begin to start automatically being deleted after roughly 180 days here, right? For adding up these uh, two time frames here, where it moves into recycle bin, and then recycle bin has that 93 day period of retention. If we do have a retention policy though, if it's just unlicensed, it will also flow into the same flow here as you did with user deletion, where you have to pay the fees to reactivate and then the monthly storage cost. 
So some pretty hefty considerations there. You can access and understand scope by going into the SharePoint Admin Center. So let's pivot in there now to see what that looks like. So within the SharePoint Admin Center, if you go under reports, you have this OneDrive accounts here. And this is gonna tell you, you know, the unlicensed account number and then the storage quantity used. So this will give you the indication of your monthly storage cost if you were to go ahead and have to activate that. And then you have the unlicensed due to retention period. And this is from the settings as it states in the SharePoint Admin Center that I showed you. Retention policy, this is in purview or the Compliance Admin Center that I showed you. Active user with no license, that's just that workflow of stripping the license, not using the end user deletion wizard or removing the account after it's done. And then duplicate accounts, which in most cases what you'll see with this is if you've given full access to another member of the organization, they actually get listed on that retention or on that OneDrive account and it'll show as duplicate in there. You'll be able to see that if you download this report, uh, but this will show you the actual UPNs, right, or the owners of the OneDrives, you know, that have that. So you have a couple of considerations when it comes to what you're going to do. And I didn't mention this at the beginning, but also take note here as the asterisk that this does not apply if you are a EDU, GCC, or DOD customer. So I'll link my blog article below, but here's some suggestions here and just some context that's really straightforward versus what you get in that support article from Microsoft, which is what happens if I take no action, right? It, what happens if you go through this flow and all of a sudden this exists now? You're not gonna automatically be forced into paying additional money. Let's just make that black and white. You're just going to have to pay if you want to reactivate anything that's older than 93 days of being unlicensed and then you're gonna to have to pay for the monthly storage costs as well too. The other important thing to note, any unlicensed users that are in there that have sat beyond 93 days are automatically gonna be moved to recycle bin and then subsequently deleted. So you basically have potentially, you know, like a 30, 90 day period um, if this has been more than 93 days since they were unlicensed already where everything's just gonna be blown away. So it's important to take that into note and have these conversations with your customers. And that kind of brings us to what are my options? And really, I think there, there could be a lot here, obviously based off of your clients, your environments that you manage, how things work today, how you've communicated retention today from them. But you could say that we're not gonna do anything except inform the customers that this is gonna be the new default retention policy. Things are automatically gonna be blown away. And if you want us to retain that, it's gonna come at a certain level of cost, right? And that's just gonna be something that, you know, they take into consideration. I do think that having this 30 day um, access for users as part of an SOP for offboarding is sufficient. Plus you have an additional 93 days that admins have to grab from the recycle bin. And that seems like it should be part of a default retention policy that's acceptable for an organization. But understanding there could be some caveats when we talk to our sensitive lawyers or legal firms that want to retain data forever, right? Or have regulatory compliance that makes them store it for three years, right? And that should not be in somebody's OneDrive. I just want to call that out. That should be in a SharePoint site. Um, it shouldn't be one person's OneDrive where we have sensitive PII. But that's usually not the case. And we don't know if that's the case, right? Unless you do some heavy investigation. The next option here that we have is really to tell the client or have them sign a waiver that says they'll pay the additional storage cost. And it's really saying that if you're not accepting that we have this retention of 93 days, basically, or the, you know, the 120 days, if we talk about 30 plus 93 days, then we don't know what the costs are going to be or if we're going to ever have to access files beyond that window. And so it could be a very nominal fee of like 30 bucks a month, right? To be able to access those files after they're done. You could look in and give them an indication today of what those costs are gonna be, but who knows how that changes over time. And really you would want to agree upon a scoped retention policy for those OneDrive accounts that you can periodically just start to blow those away. I mean, that should be part of any basic practice that you have on, but that's another consideration there. Relying on third-party backup, you know, this is something that we all should have third-party backup for our files and folders. 
that are going to a separate location outside of Microsoft's cloud. And you could use them to restore to a SharePoint site at a later time if needed. Likely you're gonna be paying much less for that cold storage for those uh, particular third-party backups that are taking place. But again, just another option there. And then the other one here is the consideration that you could license, relicense a OneDrive account that is part of a retention policy, and you could reactivate it by doing that without reactivating the entire pool that you're then paying the monthly cost on. It could be much more cost effective. If we talk about the cost of a single OneDrive license temporarily to reactivate it, access the files, and then go from there versus having a pool of storage you know that you're, you're using each month so those are the main considerations i wanted to cover here i hope this has been helpful i do have a bunch of the references in here including the faq i think it's important to take a look at if you do have additional questions based off of your environment i'll link this blog in the description of the video but these are some subtle but important changes you guys need to be attention to as always appreciate you guys hopping in with me and i'll see you guys next week